Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. I'm your co-host, M. To Dave. I'm, I'm here with my co-host, Rio, Tom Brady, Zy Fox, and Slips. Man, welcome back to the podcast. We haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? Oh, how you guys been? Good, 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 man. Yep, it's good. It's very good to have you. So today, we have somewhat of a controversial topic that we would like to address. Um, I'm going to ask my fellow co-hosts to see how they feel about this topic. But first, just to kind of give um, an introduction to kind of what has happened. So we know what has happened with Chris G, what has happened to, to some extent, to Mike Z, what has happened to Mr. Wizard. Um, who, who, who else am I forgetting, guys? Is that it or are there other? Uh, sure there's there. like 100 people every week. Yeah, there was, <laughs> Too many of those. World, there was Cinepi who did that in Smash. So okay, Euro got yeah. canceled, didn't he? Who? Euro? Yeah, Mewtwo King. Yeah. Uh, Filipino champ. Yeah, he's gone. So, oh, exactly. Yes, he was one of the first ones to go. Mm-hmm. So we want to talk about cancel culture. And please understand that we don't want to talk about politics because that's not what the podcast is really about. If you want to watch politics, you can watch, you know, other just yeah, browse yeah. social media. Yeah, yeah browse <laughs> social media. Or go to YouTube. Watch somebody's political channel. But we, we, but we, at the same time, we do understand that there's obviously a correlation, or not a There's a relationship between what happens in outside of the FGC has an effect on the FGC, and we have to be genuine and real about that. So we will talk about cancer culture, and I will. I'm going to ask for the opinions of my fellow co-hosts, starting with. Slips. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think cancel culture existed, you know, kind of before all this. Like, uh, I mean, before the internet, uh, I mean, like, Bill Maher got canceled on his show, Politically Incorrect, because he said, like, a 9-11 joke a little too soon. Tom Arnold got canceled, probably because he did something to Roseanne, Burt Reynolds. Oh, Gibson said something about Jews. He got canceled. So it has its place. I mean, career-ending public shaming is a massive de- deterrent for bad behavior. So, I mean, don't be shitty and you'll be fine. I just think there's, like, two main problems now, though, just, you know, with advanced technology. It's just one of them is it's way easier now with the Internet to cancel people. It, you know, before the Internet, someone pissed you off, like, you know, if you were watching Politically Incorrect, if you were watching Bill Maher and he says a shitty joke, you would have to log out the phone book, maybe, or try and find the phone number to the company or whoever that you need to complain to, and maybe that company, whoever that you're complaining to, only has five open lines and 300 people are calling, you're on hold, and then the uh, you, maybe you and at that point, you're probably like not pissed off anymore, and it's not worth it. Or you get a representative, and they they jot down your complaint, and that's the end of it. But, you know, nowadays Twitter is just instant, instant. You're mad right now. You can go on to their Twitter or wherever, blow them up, be mad, and you're still mad. Not only will they like you know take your information, they'll rebut your information, and then they'll have like minions too to rebut your information. So it's just like a big giant, like just swirl of just people being mad. So it's just it's just way easier. Like Twitter is like a bulletin board of complaining. So it's just way easier now. And I think the other thing that's going on is like everyone is guilty. Like everyone has done something on the internet that someone can pick out and be offended by. I know I've said dumb things on the internet. I'm sure you all have. Everyone listening has probably said something on the internet that is gonna that would someone would be upset about, and I, that's what's crazy to me. It's like the fact that we're all okay with setting this precedent. is crazy. Nobody is actually safe being online. Nobody is safe. We're all one bad social interaction away from losing our jobs. I was just saying earlier before we recorded, my uncle just lost his job just speaking up on Facebook. It's like, damn, that's crazy to me. So I'm out. Like, I haven't posted anything. I'm just done with social media. I just don't see the benefit anymore. Like, I I still have, like, my Twitter and Facebook just 
my DMs open for, you know, just people I don't talk to on a regular basis. But as far as, like, actually platform to say anything, it's like you have to have the mentality of if you're going to be online on these social uh, social media sites, like, you have to have the mentality of I'm a celebrity. And I have to, I'm, when I'm posting, I have to be holding myself as, like, a celebrity standard. Because if you say anything... Done. The internet used to be a fun place where you could say stuff, and it was fun. Not anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> but what do you say to... So, so the other side will say to you, or they will have a reply, something to the extent of, well, if you're not racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, etc., what do you have to be afraid of? To say I mean, that's that? true. That's what I'm saying. Like You have to really hold yourself to a high standard. It's just... Single. It used to be a whole mob would have to, you know, get on the phones and and you know, it, it have to really be mad. Like I said, for a long period of time in order to get through. But now, just like a a mob, the actual mob would have to get together to really get someone's attention. But now, like a single person sees something that you said or hear something that you said, be upset about it. Maybe even the thing that you said that made them mad isn't going to be enough to get everyone on board. They can do some research on you. They'll find out things that you said in the past, and they'll pick out something that's you know maybe said something a little crazy like five, ten years ago. They'll snip that. They'll plaster that all over the place. They'll get their posse. They'll try and get the, the snowball down the hill, and maybe they get a mob going, and and you're done because of something you said years ago that you probably don't even remember what the text context was or you actually just look back on it and was like, wow, that was dumb. Like, I don't think that now, but I, I maybe I did then and I've grown since then, but, you know, fat chance of anyone believing that. So, I mean, I'm just, my mentality is I'm out. I'm, I'm out. Just have fun, y'all. Let me, uh, let me tell a short story that I, I want to get Tom's reaction. Because I, because he said his fair share of controversy, con, you know, controversies as far as, you know, gaming, not some of the other stuff. Um, so obviously, I've had my fair share of moments that I think could have canceled me back in the day when I called for Stephanie's job, when I called for Paulo's job, slips when I called for you to get fired as a tester because I was, you know, a competitor. I was emotional. I didn't like the fact that low gunshots were nerfed like like two or three days before combo breaker, you know how I felt, right? I was furious. And so do we, should we judge people on their worst moments? Like I had my moment and um, I don't know if I, I have apologized to slips, but I definitely apologized to Stephanie at that time. I apologized to pa Paulo when I saw him at Evo. So, and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't want to get after your livelihood. It's not okay. You know, I know I committed a mistake and you know, it's just, I was a competitor. I, I made just a stupid decision, you know, and ever since then, you know, I really try to stay away from the negativity where I call out, you know, people, you know, who work for NRS or any other uh, fighting game company. I'm trying to avoid that, you know, just focus on the gameplay. But I'm saying that's a moment where I could have, you know, maybe get kicked out of console combat at that time for, you know, I don't know, stirring up hatred, you know, or something to that extent where I could have been exiled from the community at that particular time, you know, for that reason. So I'm, I'm Tom, should we be judged based on our worst moments or, you know, of, about something that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago? Cause we've seen people get fired for, for something that they said 30 years ago, you know, something political that they said that was maybe at that time acceptable, but now in the current age, it's not Tom, what do you think? Well, I think for in those instances, you have to look at the way the world was in general. Um, 30 years ago, we've come quite a long way. Um, uh, reliving their worst moments is uh, something that really is, be, comes from the rise of the internet. Uh, when, it, when you're just dealing with TV, people do their story on you, but then the news cycle ends and then it's done. You know, they, you can't keep talking about the same story 30 years later, you know. But on the internet, they keep the same story living for eternity. So um, there are certain things that I think, um, I don't want to say are unforgivable because, look, even in the real world, people do a crime, they serve their jail time, they come out, 
And some of them are reformed and they are changed and they want to live a productive life in society. It doesn't excuse what they've done. It could be abuse. It could be, um, you know, whatever it is. Um, but there are some who are reformed and, you know, go on to live a productive life. And they should be allowed to do so without, you know, somebody over their head reminding them every day, you know, hey, you know. Also, you have to understand the mental state of some people is also sometimes they do something really wrong and they get pounded on so bad by Twitter, FGC, that some of them, I think, are in danger of taking their own life. And that's not justice either. Um, I think there's a fine line when it comes to social justice between, um, because you have to understand, like, victims are afraid to come forward with stuff. This is really why abusers get away with stuff. Victims are afraid to go forward. And there's a huge, victims are starting to speak out now, but there's also this huge wave, cancel culture, stop it, or it's fine, whatever it may be. But I think the bottom line here is victims are becoming less and less afraid to speak out because most of this stuff happens because they say, oh, look who this person is, right? If I speak out, it'll just be his word against mine. And of course, I know women have dealt with this for a very, very long time. Um, even when it comes to matters of race, you know, it's, you know, oh, look who it is, you know this person can say whatever to me. And unless I have it on tape, if I come forward, it'll be, you know, no, this is a fine member of the community. But in reality, I think it, it is true that victims are very afraid to come out. So unfortunately, by when victims come out, there are two reasons why they don't like to come out. For one, they feel like nobody will believe them. Two, as long as the abuser is forced to relive his worst moment every day of his life or her life, the victim is in turn also forced to relive that day. So I think when it comes to child abuse, rape, sexual assault, all kind of stuff like that, racism, anything like that where somebody was, you know, discriminated against or, 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 or blatant racism or anything along those lines, cancel culture, the problem is you're not just canceling the person. Once they're canceled by constantly pounding on that person, not allowing him to live his life or post anything or say anything, you're also punishing the victim because the victim has to live that every day. Every day they have to read something about how this person did this and that. And it's like, they did that to me. So I think there's two sides to the cancel culture where even if something happened 30 years ago, punish the guy. And that's the difference between the real world and the internet. In the real world, something happens, you know, uh, and if you, you're within a statute of limitations, the guy gets punished, goes to jail, whatever it is, and that's it. On the internet, because we don't have FGC police or whatever it is, we decide to do the punishment. So we punish them for eternity, but the victim is also stuck in that hell along with their abuser. So I think there's two sides to cancel culture that I don't think that we consider. Yeah, and I, I, I just want to say... I'm not saying cancel culture is bad, like, bad. Like, there are certain things where it's legit. Like, it's like, you know, someone's speaking about, like, something legitimately happened and it's bad. And, like, public shame is a good deterrent. Sometimes it's useful. But it's, uh, there is a, a definitely abuse to go to. Now is a, a time where we're seeing a lot of it. We're seeing a lot of it, like Tom said, where, a lot of it's legit, and then we're also seeing some where it's just like I don't know, it's well, really that big of a deal. <laughs> can I? I wanted to bring up a point. Um, cancel culture isn't like w the the notion that something isn't new, like cancel culture, is actually historical. And one of the most famous ones is actually crucifixion. I don't know if you guys remember, but Jesus Christ, he that was the, the humiliation humiliation to the death penalty. They literally just let him hang on the crucifix for everybody to see and be like, hey, guys, this is our false prophet, blah, 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 from the Romans. So, Cy Fox. What? <laughs> you just say, I don't know if you guys have heard it. Remember this guy, Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Who's that guy? Who's having? Oh, go ahead, man. Well, Zyphox, I mean, hey, Zeus? Isn't Zyphox. that Ninja Killer? No, I'm just playing. Is he? <laughs> Anyways. Zyphox, what, is, what, is your, what is your opinion about the well, assignment? Like like we said, humans from the inception that they've been coming becoming like from wanderers and like just nomadic to like in clans and just in, in general groups have been publicly shaming other humans for doing deeds. And and the thing is the nature of 
accusation is actually like really really crazy when you go back to like for example the french revolution times back in the french revolution uh a lot of people were just being like hey uh by the way this noble here i remember this one time uh oh yeah by the way boom Ac accuse him of being a traitor accuse him of being someone who he's not and they just put him in a, on a guillotine that's it if you were canceled back then you were literally just put on a guillotine <laughs> uh humans have been doing it since the inception of 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 grouping right same on yeah people the, also burn people at the stake for being a witch so you can't yeah, exactly right? i mean come on now. i mean we've been doing like, it for a long long time and it's just like Cold now War, like they would just and just call people communists see how they react yeah there were actually so, hearings by Senator McCarthy, I believe it was, to weed out communists in our government, which yeah, is not if the culture isn't really like like the Zy Fox. It's not new. I just think it's easier than ever now. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. It's like cancel culture. It's it's necessary, but there's like Tom Brady said, there's a fine line that needs to be like there. It's so easy nowadays to really get caught up on like who's getting canceled here who's the per who who did this such a long time ago um it's it's quite frankly really scary because it like there's certain things that like i look back i i looked at an old message with a friend uh like when i was in like high school right mm -hmm. and i'm like dude the things that i was saying back then if anybody were to ever see that would just be <laughs> like whoa Kenny, what was I Fox? What the fuck, bro? And it's not like something crazy. It's just like stuff back then, like saying F word, for example, right? Uh, towards um, the uh, LGBT community. Back in like high school time, when I, I graduated in 2010, that was literally socially acceptable. Like, it, no one ever would ever say, hey, bro, don't say the F word, you know? And it's just like, nowadays there's no way like you you will be called out for saying that word and then you obviously what uh crimson shadow texted me is he coming on this um he said he sent you his discord. I, i'm working on it and i apologize I'm, i have been working on it but before we get him on and i'm working on it i would also like to get rio's opinion on this oh, i want to say one more thing because uh, okay. i mean there have been times when i and everyone knows i've told this story and i've told it in public and there's a clip of it on stream when i'm making a joke i'm not going to say his name because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus who said it. When I tell a story about this guy's time at Netherrealm, when, and he's just like, yo, this character is ass. This dude is this. Yo, my, and then, you know, the N-word with the A at the end, so not the other one with the hard R. And um, I've told it many years ago, and I didn't want to be... <laughs> I don't want to say who, I know. I don't, I don't know who it is, man. I'm not, but the fact of the matter is, I didn't mean it to be offensive. I was retelling a story that, you know, with, you know, I didn't, but I've realized like, that's not even okay. And I haven't really used that word since and I, I probably shouldn't have, but like Slip said, there are things that people have said that did, you're not trying to be offensive, even retelling a story. And you're not like, oh, even though I'm not trying to be offensive and it's like, you have to be more sensitive about things in today's day and era, day and age. And, uh, I've apologized for that, and I can't believe I was actually so insensitive to even tell that story in general uh, using that word. And I don't, I don't think, even though it's not the hard word, I don't think that anybody should be using that, you know, outside of that culture. You know, you're not, I just don't think that, you can't tell somebody what they find offensive. You know what I mean? And uh, especially even today, that is very offensive. And um, it's not a term of endearment that someone like myself has the right to use i don't believe so um i've come around to that but there are people who have who are blatantly racist you know blatantly racist and it's very very hard to uh to bet the ca cancel culture who it's very very hard to tell people oh get over it or etc you know what i mean because it's like you can't tell someone how they should feel you can even say oh i had a weak moment i didn't mean to offend somebody but you may have not have meant to offend them, but it doesn't mean it offends them any less, you know? So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, what happened with the I can't breathe thing or, 
uh, I don't know the exact quote about watermelon matter. It doesn't really matter. You can't tell someone, how, even if you didn't mean to be offensive and it was a mistake, you can't tell people how to be offended. I think there are varying degrees of that, which somebody can say, okay, you went way too far, you know, such as you brought up slips with Bill Maher, et cetera. Like, okay, 9-11 joke, that's not okay, especially so soon. A lot of people died in that, you know. Um, so I think there are degrees in that, especially when it comes to matters of race or what's going on with police brutality. I think that those things are not funny to even be joked about. So for sure, I think in general, there are varying degrees of whatever. The problem with cancel culture, like I said, in things like that, it doesn't seem so bad. But when it comes to abuse, the abuser is stuck reliving it every day, just like the person they abuse. You know, and it's not like you go you you go to prison, you come out, the the person who was abused can just kind of like separate themselves, be in their own world, etc. But when it happens in a in a gaming community, it's kind of like Every time this person posts anywhere or does anything, people are going to say, you did da-da-da-da-da. Well, as the person who was abused, you're going to read your friends pounding on this guy, and you're going to remember what this person did to you. So it just, I think at a certain point, it's kind of hard to do when it comes to really serious crimes. I think really serious things like this that are actual crime in the real world are just starting to come to light. So it goes beyond cancel culture. I mean, if you really think the person should be punished, call the police or encourage whoever it is to call the police, you know? And I think really, instead of canceling the person, we should be more supportive of the victim and helping them get through it, as opposed to piling on the abuser. We got it all wrong when it comes to situations like that. Transition to uh, <clears throat> uh, Crimson Shadow, can you hear us? Yeah, how are you guys doing? Hey, Crimson, hey. how you doing? Man? What's up? Yo, man? what's up? So a quick introduction for our buddy Crimson. He is the administrator of Test Your Might. He, is, he has helped many people in the community travel, pay expenses, et cetera, et cetera. So we're very happy to have... Don't forget Rio's opinion. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get Rio's opinion as well. So I, I just thought, you know, for our viewers, instead of having, you know, it's important to bring in different kinds of views, not just have five white guys talking about this issue, you know, bring in somebody with a different perspective, with some different experiences. I think it's very important to do that when you're discussing these sensitive topics. So I want to get, I want to give the floor to Crimson Shadow and uh, please let us know what you think about cancel culture and everything that comes along with it. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, you know, the first I just want to say that I fully get both sides of the issue. Right. Uh, like, regardless of where my personal opinion lies, I totally understand people who have concerns both ways. Right. I understand the concerns of the people who want to feel protected. And I also understand the concerns of the people who feel like people are going too far. Um, I think one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that a lot of this is a reaction to something. You know, I think a lot of times people feel like, you know, what is this? Like, it's, it's coming out of nowhere and now uh, they're canceling people and, you know, there's no free speech and people can't talk anymore. And um, so while I think it is important that we protect people's free speech, I think one of the things that's most important about what's going on is that it's a reaction to people not being heard, you know? Um, there are a lot of people who, up until this point, both inside and outside of the FGC, have had things happen to them and they've, you know, they've told people, they've told friends, some of them have reported things to the authorities um, and they were, they were brushed off, they were brushed aside or whatever their concerns were, were not taken seriously. And so I think part of the reason that people are so upset now is because, you know, after such a long period of telling people about things, confiding in your friends, confiding in, you know, TOs or authorities or, police and and having your concerns kind of brushed aside people feel like well how can i be heard you know and so for them this is their way to be heard and so most of the other people that are amplifying these messages just want to help these people be heard um, but i do agree with some of the things that have been said about the fact that we have to make sure that it's not a witch hunt right if we're not varying anything and we're canceling people immediately with no evidence um, then 
not only is that dangerous by itself, but it also it affects the message as well, right? If people are afraid that you're just going to cancel them for no reason or that you're making things up, it's hard for them to take your cause seriously. So I think overall, these are two sides of things that we have to balance in how we go about it. Well, let me ask Rio, and then Crimson, I would like to get back to you again after that. Rio, what do you think? Like, I think the issue here is that it's a, it, there's a definitely a free speech component here, but I think there's a difference between some knucklehead on Twitter saying something racist and somebody actually saying, I'm going to go to tournament. I'm going to, I'm going to punch this black guy. Like that's, I mean, both are bad, obviously, but one is far worse than the other. Cause one is actually threatening violence. Um, and, and it's actually also, you know, you can actually go to, to, to the authorities and say, okay, look, this is a direct threat towards me. You have to do something about this, please. Well, the other one is just some idiot ranting on Twitter, you know. Like, do you see the difference? Rio, what do you think? I mean, I don't really have a problem with cancel culture. I think the main issue is somebody can say something and then everybody will all of a sudden believe it instantly. Like, let's say, for example, let's say I make a tweet longer and I talk about in it, I target either, it could be anybody, it could be Dave, Zy Fox, Crimson, right? And I make this big tweet longer. How much you want to bet people would just retweet it, favorite be on my side, say, yeah, man, screw that guy, call your work. But there's no proof there. That That's what I think is the main issue with it, is too many people will jump the gun and assume that this is 100% true and happen when they haven't even waited to see if there's any evidence or, you know, they just immediately jump on the bandwagon and try to get this person penalized. Angry, angry I think it shouldn't really no, be like, yeah. They have no rationale. Foaming at the mouth. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and that's... You shouldn't be able to call somebody something and get away with it, but at the same time, you shouldn't be able to accuse somebody for something and then get away with it. Like there has to be a penalty here on both sides. There's well, I mean, a, there's a deterrent on like one side. There's, it's very one sided because like you stand to lose anything that like if you have anything to lose, like if you're in a public position, if you're someone who has like followers, if you have like anything going on in the public space that can be canceled you have so much more to lose than the accuser does if you're just like the accuser is just joe smo who works exactly but that's my job. point so it doesn't have to let's be. say people believe me right or whoever and then you know it starts getting retweets retweets it grows and then something gets done about it to you let's say you lose your job or whatever how do you restore the damage that's been done i mean you already have to waste time to explain to everybody that you didn't do this and that time you're never going to get back that's the main issue i see with cancel culture it's only that part right well, yeah it's also there's also a component of it and crimson and i have debated this both you know back then you know, on skype and also on test your mind is does freedom of speech necessarily mean freedom you know of you know freedom of consequences crimson how do you put those two together in your view yeah, you know, I think it's a, it's a really interesting question. And the reason this is a tricky issue is because getting back to what you just said a couple minutes ago, you know, when people ask, like, why is it why is it wrong to just say something or to, you know, express an opinion that is uncomfortable for someone else? And I think part of the issue was, is if you guys have any friends that are victims or have you ever talked to people that are victims of, you know, either racism or sexual assault and things like that. Um, it's about the fact that they don't actually feel safe, right? So if someone says these, these things, with, even without making a direct, right? If you've suffered from racism or you've been sexually assaulted in the past or you know people who have, if you're in an environment where people, who are, allowed, people are allowed to be there who are saying these things, it ties into every experience that you've had throughout your life up to this point, right? So if I'm a victim of racism, right? And I'm showing up at the FTC, and there, I know there are people sitting next to me who are allowed to be racist, right? Even on Twitter or whatever. Regardless of whether they make a threat to me or not, I'm probably not going to feel safe in that environment. And so the question is do we care whether or not people feel safe? All right. Because I think the safer people feel, the easier it is to include more people in the FTC. But it goes but, beyond right. even just that, though, matters of race. Like, we saw what happened a few years ago in Florida in that Madden tournament. And I'm... There has to be... Your mic cut out. I'm fairly certain that we're all surprised that something similar hasn't at least 
it's happened in the FGC. We said we've had people threaten violence in the FGC. But really what worries me the most is one day, be it somebody, because to Rio's point, you know, like you said, you could say anything and whatever. But the problem is some victims feel like, but what if I say something and they don't believe me and whatever. So victims are also hesitant to come. The other side is a victim is hesitant to come forward because they don't want to go through it and say, oh, well, you're wrong. It didn't really happen. Right. So a lot of times I tend to stay quiet. Uh, yeah, it's a slippery slope. That's why I don't know about you guys. Next tournament I go to, I'm going to make sure I have a GoPro and record everything because I don't want to get accused or be in like whatever area and then get have somebody make up something but it goes beyond it's that. just it's gotten so dangerous the right problem now is this is not the legal system this is social justice yeah but that's my point like if you go to the next tournament you better bring a gopro and record your entire have a experience breaking point. not have anybody make anything up about you because if people believe it you're screwed it doesn't matter if it's an abuser or someone who's abused and has suppressed it these people are very capable of just snapping one day going to a tournament and just opening up on people in general. We've seen really? it in school. We've seen it in schools. We've seen it, whether it's somebody a, a bullied or bullying or whatever, or they might take their own life. There are consequences to this kind of stuff or whatever that the FTC has not had to deal with yet. But I worry that, you know, there's a fine line between all this stuff and how to handle it properly. Like, you know, obviously you want justice for the victim, but social justice isn't justice. And sometimes through social justice, more people get hurt. But at the same time, like Crimson said, you want people to feel safe, right? So it's a really delicate situation. It's a really slippery slope on how to do it all properly. We're not the law. We're not the authorities. We don't have the FGC trauma hotline for you to call. We don't, we don't have FGC police, right? It's, it's not the same thing the world is set up to handle stuff like this or for people to get help the fgc is not well honestly though fgc is a very diverse community if not the most diverse ones according to some research that was done on event hubs an article that i've seen and i think we've done pretty damn well like are there some assholes here and there absolutely and I, there were some instances where I, you know, I almost got into fights with people, not over race or you know anything you know of that nature. More just like the ones, you know, people just being rude and stuff. But for the most part, I would say those things are extremely rare. And I would like to think that we, just in the process, we weed out those people and keep you know the people who focus on the gameplay. You know, we just there to have fun. They want to compete, whether you're black, white, I don't care. You know, whether you're, you know. Man, female, trans, doesn't really matter. And I think we've done a pretty damn good job. I think that has to be uh, said as well. Crimson, do you agree or? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think, yeah. First of all, the FGC is really unique, right? If you compare it to a lot of esports communities, there are a lot of communities that it's harder for, for people to get into from all kinds of backgrounds because maybe, you know, you need a crazy gaming PC or something like that that costs a lot of money or, it's also you the know. Older community, I think. The FGC in whole is probably older than most, almost every other gaming community outside of like Dungeons and Dragons, et cetera. Right. But a really interesting point and why I think this is like actually a great opportunity is that to me, the fact that you guys feel this way means that for the first time, both sides should actually understand each other. And the reason I say that is think about it, right? A lot of the things that people are saying now about how cancel culture makes them feel, right? You feel like something could happen to you and, right, it could be unfair and you don't have a voice or you could say, hey, I didn't do this or it's false and no one would listen to you, right? And the funny thing about it is that is exactly how a lot of the people feel who have had things perpetrated against them in the past. And that's why cancel culture exists, right? Because people feel like somebody in an event could do some stuff to them and they could speak up or say something and their voice is not being heard. So I think it's super interesting that now, honestly, like both sides of this should understand each, each other, you know? And so the question is, how do we allow people to feel like they're being hurt on both sides and be fair about all of it? And I think, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky issue. You know, it's tough. I think we need a lot more security and we need cameras everywhere at tournaments. We definitely need more security. 
like way more cameras, way more security. You shouldn't be able to go in a venue with a backpack and not have it checked. But, I agree. Oh, hold on, hold on a minute though. Why? As we as we have just established, the FGC, at least from my experience when I was traveling, is I've roomed with people, never got anything stolen. Everybody was super, you know, polite, and I I really have never had any. Well, you're lucky, Dave, because some of us have been to tournaments and we have multiple shit stolen. I mean, I understand that, but. Again, I don't think it's that an okay. Look at people left the FGC, they steal. I'm sure people in other communities steal too. Then fucking take care of your stuff. Yeah, but my point is look, if they had cameras, like the fact that I can put a controller on the chair behind me, get something, turn around 10 seconds later, and it's gone is an issue. Why is there no camera right there to tell me who did that? I know, but why, if, if that's the case, why would you let your controller be on Super? No, I agree. That's why the next time I go to, I'm going to make sure I have all my stuff together and I'm going to have a GoPro on 24 7. But. <laughs> I'm telling you the issues of how current tournaments are. I mean, a lot of it isn't just like at tournaments, though. I mean, a lot of it's right. outside of the venue. A lot of it is yeah, true. It's at hotel venues on, outside. A lot of it's online interaction. Like, not just we need more cameras and we need more security. Like, we need. It would help though if we had those two. A case by case basis, man. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Most of the, if you read through most of the stories, especially about. Like all the sexual assault that stuff that went down, most of it was happening either like at parties after the tournament or in people's hotel rooms. So yeah, I think that's exactly right. You know, it can't just be up to the tos and cameras and stuff to police just because you know a lot of these people were purposely leading people away from the venue to go get drunk somewhere else. You know, I mean, you need some sort of evidence. I think I just say you can't say unfortunately. But I mean, I think we live in an age where you know, more conversations are recorded than ever now with, you know, DMs and stuff like that. So Donald Sterling lost an NBA team because of a private conversation that was recorded by his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah that, you know, he's in his own home. And so you have to be very mindful with what you say because there's always – now, what he said was – He's, he's an obvious yeah, racist, was, right? Yeah, was, yeah, and racist. you can't have someone like that with that kind of like slave owner mentality owning a basketball team. It's like you don't even look at them like people. The way he talked, it was almost like they're not even people. And you can't have that. You know, that kind of mentality that we're trying to – that's passed down from generation to generation. Obviously, we don't want that. Um, and I, I think culture is changing. I mean, the fact that the Washington Redskins are going to change their name – that's a that that just shows a lot about how the culture is changing. Like people are like, you know what? This isn't okay. It's not okay, and it is changing slowly. But in the FGC, a lot of stuff is happening rapidly. You know, well, so that's that's you know, I mean, that's the kind of country that we live in. You know, America's a very dynamic country. You know, I can speak from from some from experience because I've lived in other countries. A lot of countries are not like that. It goes very, very slower because the population is, you know, is a lot smaller and, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they're underdeveloped. So, you know, so it's not rapid as it is here. But I think I agree with, with Crimson. There has to be an, you know, a balance, an equilibrium, if you will, between what's happening, you know, on both sides. And I think it's super, super important not to ac accuse people of what stuff that they haven't done. But at the same time, you know, if you were a victim of whether it's racist, racism or sexual assault, we want to take those allegations seriously. But I'm hearing that, you know, there have already been some instances where, you know, people have tried to try to take advantage of it by accusing people because you're mad at them, you know, and stuff like that. And I think that's really, really dangerous. Yeah. Let me you know, give an example of that. Right yeah. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. When I went through what I went through, and I'm not going to relive it, there are people that were going forward like, oh, Tom stole this, Tom stole that. I called on stream this guy. I didn't want to call him out, but. He's like, Tom stole my PSP. He stole this. What a thief. So I called the guy whose house it was supposedly stolen from. And I said, uh, I called it on stream and I was like, hey, um, what about this guy's PSP and stuff that I supposedly stole? He was like, no, he left it here in his backpack. And I was like, oh, he must not know about it. He was like, he knows. I called him like five times. He knows where it is. But he's on Twitter saying I stole it. You know, it's, and that's to a much lesser extent. What Rio was talking about is, like, hey, you know, especially if somebody who's already been accused of something, obviously they're wrong, but they also have themselves the right to protect themselves against somebody going forward in the future as a false accuser, right? So it's like there's a fine line between that, between you want justice, right? 
Or, and you also want to not be like, well, guess what? Somebody else came out and said you abused them now. And if it's not true, but in the FGC, what are the odds that some of these people who have obviously been found that they actually did this, that somebody else can come forward and anyone is actually going to believe the person like, oh, I didn't do that. Zero, right? And it's just my word against yours. At the same time, to Rio's point, how do you stop somebody who is in a good position and somebody comes out and says, you know, just for whatever, whatever kind of reason, make up a lie about how they did something or they said something or they whatever, and it's not true and there's no proof, people are still going to jump on that person. So there's got to be a fine line. Between- yeah, I don't think you can. That's the issue. I mean, there's got to be a line. Which sucks because between- if someone does get abused at a tournament, they don't have proof. It's horrible. Thank you. So it's horrible on both sides. Like, what can you do, really? But you don't want victims to be afraid to come forward either. That's why this is so. No, hard, I agree. That's what right? I'm saying. It's a messed up when someone gets abused, then they can't be say anything because they don't have proof. Something. It's stupid. Yeah, because you know? and it's kind of weird because people are afraid to talk. People that get abused are afraid to come forward. And, and part of the true. part of the reason why is that just Fair like term? just like we're, we're saying, right? People have kind of made use of the fact that they know, hey, you know, if this happens in my hotel room and there's no one else around to see it, then at the end of the day, after the fact, it's going to be my word versus their word, right? And if there's already an imbalance, like if one of the people is already popular and people have no idea who that other person is, then generally that person knows it's possible that everyone's just going to believe me because I'm popular, I'm a name and stuff like that. And there are a lot of cases where even recently, um, I forgot the name of uh, the girl who brought out the accusations against uh, Zero, um, but she had to go and write a whole another Google Doc because when she wrote um, her first twit twit longer or whatever, she immediately got attacked afterwards by a lot of Zero's fans. All right, and so I think, like you said, that's why some people just said it's not worth it because they feel like they're going to ruin their own reputation. By coming out to say something against someone when it's just their word versus the, the other person's, you know? So it's like, that's kind of a tricky issue. Like, how do we deal with that, you know? Well, I, you I think the one thing we should do is encourage people. If this happened to you, you were really abused, something happened, don't wait X amount of time down the line and then reveal it in the twit longer, right? That's go to the police. To say, though. Go to the police. Yeah, but at the same time, if you're 17 and you're abused, sure. yeah, like you're at such a younger age, you don't really know what to say. So it comes across you know, many years later, that, like, wow, yeah, that was messed up. There are hotlines out there designed to help you through that. Just because it happened at a fighting game event doesn't mean you... We should be educating people as to there is help for you out there. It doesn't have to be in the FGC. You can call counselors. You can speak with people. Yeah, but what if you love the FGC but you can't go anywhere because the person that abused you is at every event? Well, that gets a slippery slope because you have to let somebody know, but the victims a lot of times are afraid to say something and then they're but, stuck, you know, so it's really hard. It's I the just same thing at your job. Your boss abuses you at work. What are you supposed to do? You don't want to lose your job. I just want to say, though, it's important to keep in mind that, like, for example, just to put things in context, right? I talked to someone this week who was a victim of, uh, of rape and what she said and also what a lot of people who've written these similar kind of twit loggers said is that at the time that it happened, it is it's weird to to put yourself in this perspective if you haven't been through it. But at the time that it happened, she wasn't even sure completely like whose fault it was. You know what I mean? And it a lot of these people are not they're not like random incidents, right? It's not someone the person doesn't know. If you read a lot of these twit longers, yeah, sometimes it's your best friend. Yeah, yeah. a lot of these people groom these girls by becoming friends with them, getting to know them, right? They told them personal things. They felt like they could trust them. And so after something happens, a lot of times there's this moment where like, I'm not it's my sure. fault that I do something wrong. Yeah. yeah. Or even maybe this was okay and I'm just being weird about it. You know what I mean? Did and he so, really do that? I mean, was I okay with it at the time? And you almost talk yourself into, I was actually okay with it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because like, exactly. yeah, that's just easier than coming forward, right? I mean, you gotta make, you yeah, gotta make I, peace with it one way or the it's other. Hard, yeah. It's hard to go through, right? And and nobody who's ever gone through it can ever possibly not gone through it can ever possibly understand what that's well, like. There's you know? something that has to be said. You know, I haven't done any scientific research, obviously. Who has? I don't know anybody, but 
while we are diverse in terms of the races, obviously we're not very diverse when it comes to women being in FGC. And there's, let's be serious here, there's a huge stereotype about, you know, fighting gamers being nerds, you know, who are socially awkward and don't know how to, you know, properly communicate with, with women. I mean, is, am I being unfair here? I mean, there's a huge stigma. There's a stereotype, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a stereotype. And a lot An of accurate people, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if I were a woman, Honestly, it will probably not be the community. I'm not trying to like, you know, shun anybody or distance everybody from the FGC, but obviously I would be kind of almost scared. I mean, I would be concerned, right? Because you have it's these worse guys. In other communities, I'll tell you that. What's that? It's pretty bad in other communities as well. I would like imagine FGC, you know, the guy says, Oh, I'll help you out. I'll, you know, whatever. And then it's like, you know, the girl's like, Oh, thank you so much. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just making the point that, yeah, I can completely understand, you know, why, you know, there's concern. And I would obviously encourage, I would urge all the guys, you know, it might not be the best, you know, place to look for, you know, a romantic interest, if you will, you know, because maybe the girl is just there to play and that's it. She's not interested in, you know, having a relationship. Women do feel awkward about that. They feel... Um... It sucks because not every guy does this. Like some guys actually are like, hey, let's play. And they want to play and they want to help you learn. Some guys are like, I want to help you learn. But, but they go to my hotel room after me. Yeah, exactly. They expect a little more. Yeah, like a and, favor, yeah. And right. girls are very like, you know, I don't know who do I trust? You know, who am I safe around? Who, you know, and it's, 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 it's hard. It's true. It's, it's really hard. And girls obviously being so outnumbered by men, obviously they're, they're, a little more leery about it. I, I, I definitely agree. Kristen, do you have to say do you have anything to say on this topic? As far yeah. as you know, the, not necessarily the like you know the racism, but more like the you know the the difference between men and women in the FGC. Yeah, I think I think first of all I agree with all of you guys. But second of all, I think it's it's a tricky issue because there are a couple sides to it too, right? On one hand, yeah, it's it's kind of been unbalanced. So it's hard for people to feel comfortable. On the other hand, there are also issues, and I, I don't mean to apply this as a general thing, but at least in a few cases, there are issues of people who were just online personalities and realized that the FGC was full of mostly males, mostly younger, right? And knew that, hey, if I come and show my stuff like to these people and show up in, in costumes and stuff like that, I'm going to get far more attention than I might and the internet in general are in other communities, all right? And so it's easy for them to come and set up a Twitch channel. All of a sudden, all these guys are there, all right? <laughs> giving them love, giving them feedback and stuff like that. And that can turn into kind of a dangerous move too, you know? Well, isn't that what happened with Bunny and uh, Mike C where, now she posted a picture, not, not to him necessarily, but you know, she is some kind of cosplayer. I'm not really familiar with her because I don't, <laughs> I don't go to Twitter very often, but. You know, like she posts a picture, it's very provocative. And, you know, she's like, hey, what do you guys think? And maybe he misinterpreted that as, okay, I'm going to try to talk into her and then I'm going to say some stuff. So it's a very difficult situation. Um, obviously, I'm not blaming her, but I can kind of see maybe he misinterpreted. Maybe she's trying to seduce me or something. You know, like there's also that aspect that's, you know, almost in the individualistic in nature because you don't know what those people are thinking. They could be, you know, maybe she wants to, you know, to turn, you know, seduce him or, you know, or invite him in some sense. So again, it's a very, very difficult situation to determine. And um, it, it's not easy to distinguish this stuff. Crimson, do you agree with my analysis or do you think I'm I, off here? I do. I do. And that's why I think what you said is important, which is that if you, if you like someone or you think you want to start something, you got to be careful. Cause let's, let's face it. Like I think all of us here know that not everyone really understands how to talk to the opposite sex, you know? And um, when people see someone that they're attracted to, you know, and they're like, Oh man, you know, like maybe this is my chance or whatever, you know, if they just go for it, a lot of times they can say things that, on one side could seem awkward all the way to almost seeming harassing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so along with the people who are legitimate, like, harassers, you also have people who, they're just awkward. They, they never talked to a girl before. If they like guys, they never talked to a guy before, you know, in this kind of way. So that's, that's why, like you said, 
if you if you want to try to start something in the FGC, you just really need to be careful about how you go about it and, and what you say, you know. And I, I think the important thing also is, and I, you know, as I'm getting older, I kind of recognize this. I would handle my, if I'm at a tournament, I'm handling myself as though I was at work. That's the way I'm going to yeah. handle myself. Better have that, that GoPro on too. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, well, hold on. I, 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 well, I'm not going to, you know, I don't care about that. I'm just saying I'm handling myself professionally the way I would at a work environment, you know. I'm not going to hit on anybody, you know, whatever, any of that stuff. I'm going to con conduct myself, not talk about politics and any of that stuff. And I think that's the best way to do it. If, you know, you think a girl shows you interest, then maybe you can make something happen, you know. But obviously, you you know, you don't want to invite her to Remo and, and harass her. That's ridiculous. That's not what I I'm think saying. It's, I think, to be honest with you, at least in my opinion, it's it's always better to be, you know, going to a tournament to – in general, going to a tournament, some people go to tournaments and, like, I don't know, going there to hook up with girls is kind of like, and this has happened. Some people go there just because they do want to meet someone and hopefully something will come out of it. And it's like, that's one of the reasons that makes girls hesitant to go, you know, because while you're online, you're safe at home. When you go there, all these people that see your cosplay pictures or whatever, they're all going to be there, you know, so it's, you know. And if Dave had a GoPro, how much you want to make it bet we would have Dave in private forget it turned off and he'd be like, this fool, this anti <laughs> Zilla. <laughs> no, but it is true. And Rio was like, right. It may come to the point that if you really, the best way to protect yourself, unfortunately. Hey, I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing next time I go to. Yeah. You guys don't have to follow. Suit. People do it in their I just car. know I'll be safe and won't be in any issues. People do it in, you see it on YouTube. People, when they get pulled over by the police, turn the camera on. Right? Yeah, exactly. You should always have your camera on. Dude, well, I think imagine. Especially at a tournament. You know how much drama and shit happens at tournaments? I don't know. Someone can easily accuse you of doing something when you didn't. Imagine being this scared of being accused and then, like, the other side, imagine just being scared of being harassed and being abused. Like, you gotta put yourself in their shoes. It's well, but, for people I, who are I, able to be abused like that. I think, aside from the, you know, the issue with the women, not, you know, that it's their issue, you know, it's our issue as guys, but I think we've done, I don't know whether I'm being too optimistic. I think we've done a pretty damn good job for the most part. Like, well, people, I don't know about it. There's know. been a lot of incidents at like every tournament, Dave. You're acting like nothing. There's, no, been, no, a no. Lot more well, I'm speaking from There's been a lot of shit that's happened in these tournaments. Just because people don't talk about it doesn't mean it didn't happen. In my younger days, everybody knows I was the biggest loudmouth, called everybody a fool, called everybody anti zoning, zealot, trash. Dude, that was during the 3D MK era. There were no offline tournaments. <laughs> Dude, we're lucky that we're in because holy dude, shit. I even call for Stephanie's job. I call for Paolo's job. And and I did apologize. I told the story already. So I'm going to go over it again. But I'm just saying. Arson was fine. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Dave, I don't think you would want to meet some of these people offline tournaments. The shit that they well, were saying online. Like maybe I'm just getting older, but I remember the days when, you know, did I, did I get along with everybody? No. But for the most part, people treated me pretty damn well, and I treated them pretty damn well. Like, you know, like. Dave, what are you talking God, about? I'm your experience of not being days. whatever at these tournaments story. doesn't mean that Once nothing happened. I, I used to play this guy. No, I, I'm, I'm just, I know, but I, I'm just speak, I'm speaking from my own experiences. I'm not speaking for everybody else. No, I get that, but you have to take, you have to realize that even though you had good experiences, nothing happened to you. At every these, at all these tournaments that you went to that were happy, 100%, like joy, someone there, something well, happened I cannot, that was fucked up. Well, here's the thing. I cannot control what, you know, we cannot control what people do in the hotel rooms and, and stuff like that. We can only control for the most part what people do, you know, in at, at the venues. And I don't know how, you know, you know, if you want to go to somebody's hotel, <laughs> I would reconsider if you think that person might be malicious. Like that's, I mean, use your judgment. But most yeah, of but sometimes they're not malicious. That's right. the issue, dude. They're very good at being fake. Like in your DM, they're all like, hey, man, you know, friends, this, that. You go to a hotel room, then all of a sudden they turn into Hannibal Lecter. Like, how do you know? Well, I'm just saying, if I were a woman, I probably wouldn't, you know, on the first time would go to a guy's hotel room. I don't care who he is, how he flirts with me. It does not matter. A lot of these sure. people were actually friends, though. And not like, yeah. I met this yeah, person. that's another thing. You know, they were like, it's your best friend. They were trading, you know, DMs for months. They were yeah. seeing each other in multiple events, you know? So, Bro, I'm so fortunate. We bring up the 3D MK, MK Deception. I used to play this one new smoke player all the time online, right? Back in the Baraito days and, of course, whatever. 
And he was pretty good, but uh, I would never shit talk him, right? And I go to the first ever CEO, right? Uh, for MK9. Guy comes up to me. He's like, yo, you know who this is? It, it was, it was, it was uh, you know, newbie who I used to play, right? In MK Deception. He comes up to me. I never knew who he was, but I would never shit talk him, right? And he's like, yo, you don't remember me? I was like, no. He's like, yo, it's newbie. I was like, Thank God I never talked to him, right? <laughs> because years Dude, later, real he, talk. Years later, he found. Right? God, Scott, Dude, I'm real talk. Ninety-five percent of the online community during 3D MK would have been canceled. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. That's yeah. yeah that's, I, I remember the old like Tekken Zaibatsu forums and we used to have the STL garbage thread, and it was like one of the most viewed threads <laughs> on the God. entire site. And I like they eventually purged it and everything. And I always just be like, man, we used to have some some so some zingers in there that were just so hilarious we had like so many good posts but now i'm like Phew, thank yeah. god that this, that shit got it <laughs> well, yeah. god that's deleted that, that's my issue well that's the part of the issue is that to me at least people look like 20 30 years at stuff that you posted and they judge you by completely different standards because let's be serious here. 20 to 25 years ago you know we had like you know gay marriage stuff Back then, that's what that's what Bush Senior used to run on. Like, and he won because of that. So back in the day, that was accepted. It was acceptable to do this. That's true. But now it's you know. So if back in the day you said something against that, not that I did, but they called it family values. Exactly, they call it family value. Not that those guys have any, but that's not the point. The point is that back in the day that was kind of okay. But now you know, if you're just you, if you're being judged by these new standards compared to the old ones, you're in trouble. But, you know, it, there also has to be a line somewhere, right? I think most of the people who get canceled for super old stuff, it's usually not like, oh, they said something that it wasn't PC or whatever. It's like they were wearing blackface or dropping the N-word or something like that, you know? Most of the cases that I've seen where people were canceled from something from a mm -hmm. long time ago, it was either pretty bad or it was consistent with how they are now, meaning... All right, if you're still kind of borderline racist now, and then something comes up with you in blackface, you know, 20 years ago, people are going to be less likely to forgive you, right? Whereas if, you know, if you look at Justin Trudeau's situation, right, yeah. uh, the PM of Canada, you know, he's a generally likable guy. He seems like he's fighting a lot for different groups of people. Some old pictures came out. They were bad. He was in blackface, and he owned up to it. He said, look, you know, I apologize for this, and he's generally okay. So I think there's like a few different factors that go into it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's... You actually get canceled or not. <laughs> right. I think it just depends on if you pissed off the wrong person or set of people. And if they really want you canceled, they'll find a way. Speaking of old uh, forums, MK United doesn't exist anymore, does it? I think no. Gurchep went down a long time ago. Yeah, I think, think Gurchep might still be running it. I'm not really sure. He, he, remember no, that? He, no, it doesn't exist anymore. He put up a uh, he put up a screen that said like MKU is under maintenance. It'll be back soon. And then it just was that way for like two or three years, <laughs> and it never came back. And then it disappeared. I, I thought he brought it back maybe for a little while when, when um, and he um. Storms and I used to do that little podcast. I think he might have done it. I'm not really sure, but yeah, that there was a lot of bad stuff on there. I mean, even some from from myself. Oh my god! But Dude, remember the different. caged form where people just go in there and act like animals, yeah. and people eat popcorn that, and watch yeah, people like, just say the dumbest just shit. A, it was just a different culture back in the day in terms of like, they literally there was zero political correctness. You could say whatever you want. I'm not saying like everybody was racist, but you know, like everybody was like. You know, they Most of them were. talked trash to each other. They didn't really care. You know, they insulted everybody. It was just, uh, it was nasty. It really, really was. But it was acceptable at that time. It was considered part of, you know, of that, you know, of their community. It was like the Modern Warfare 2 of the MK community. The whole 3D era was like that. Um, I wanted to bring up something that we haven't actually, I thought we were going to address. Um, and it's, this is... Uh, the speaking about DMS and Infinity, are we going to talk about that? What happened? Are you guys are you guys not aware of everything that, that came out? Uh, Wait, what did DMS do? Whoa, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and link you to the tweet longer that Infinity. Oh, uh, hold on, something. I, I know about I, it. Zafa, hold on a minute. 
Uh -huh. Is this something I don't want to tarnish everybody's reputation? That's not what we're going to do on this damn podcast. If it's something that that actually happened, that's been confirmed, as in the cases like Mr. Wizard, who admitted to it, F Champ, who admitted and apologized. I don't want to engage in any gossip. I don't want to destroy anybody's career or get anybody in trouble. I just want like, to like. I think we should all definitely like. It's it went under the radar. I'm not sure how. If you're not close to Infinity, I guess. Um, but basically. DMS is one of her abusers. She came out with a twit longer. I think we should talk about it because not a lot of top players obviously said anything, I guess. It came out and it kind of went, I don't know how it did, but it went under the radar and is right in our community. Well, just, to a, just to get a time frame, when did this happen? Something recently? Or... Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, yeah. here, let me go ahead and link it into I don't the, know the exact, uh, which, which CEO it was, but it was, she said it was CEO. Yeah. And it was like when she was like 17, turning 18 type of stuff going on. And there's sexual acts depicted in the tweet longer. I, I posted it. There is a huge thing. I don't know how. Bro, what the hell? Yeah. And it was it's very, very disgusting. We haven't really discussed. And, and DMS obviously confirmed some of the things, I, I believe, um, that happened. But he has his own version of the story. So. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I can talk about like the TYM side of it, which is that. I did remove DMS from staff and ban him. But I want to say, just to be super clear, the reason that I did it was based on the text messages that she posted, right? Because when I read through the text messages, like, no one should be talking to anyone else like that. And especially in light of that situation, right? Regardless of the details of, you know, he said, she said, or whatever, just the hard evidence, the text messages alone, were bad enough to where I felt like people would be uncomfortable having this person around, right? Because you, you just can't treat people like that, you know? So I think that's important to say here that, like, regardless of, you know, both of their accounts, just the messages alone are, are pretty bad on their own. Wait, this is the same DMS from Injustice 1? This is the same DMS yeah. that at CEO, what? he announced everybody coming out last year. Remember, he was wearing the MK watch. I mean, I was at CEO last year. I don't know about you guys, but he was like, he was, a, a, to my knowledge, a prominent figure out there. Like, he was out there announcing everybody coming in. He was like the announcer for CEO of 2019. He, he commentated, yeah, he's commentated a lot of like injustice matches and stuff like that, you know? And he's run brackets in places. And he was in the Marvel community before that. He was kind of like a Marvel hype guy, you know? Has he commented on? on uh... Yeah, he's also commented on on no, the I'm allegations. About... And... Yeah, what did he say? Uh, let's go. I obviously I actually unfollowed him. Um, we unfollowed each other for, but I mean, you know, I have a closer relationship to Infinity than I guess some of you guys, just because King and and everything two yeah, years yeah. ago. Um. Yeah, there's just there was just a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. There's a the whole tweet longer. It's actually one of the more um, <clears throat> graphic ones too. That's that's crazy because that just everything that was been happening it was like okay, other communities, other this, that, the third, and then the one that hits close to home. Like I'm surprised that you guys haven't heard of it. For some of it. Yeah, I've but heard. I didn't know, yeah, because obviously King is in my local scene and, um, you know, at least he used to live here. I think he's in Florida then right now, I'm not mistaken. So I've heard some of it, but I didn't know. He didn't really talk about it that much, so I wasn't really I wasn't really certain. So I wasn't, you know, to what extent, you know, what the story actually entailed, what happened. I really wasn't, wasn't sure. I mean, and to be fair, dude, there's a lot of stuff to keep up with, right? So it's not it's not easy reading everybody's story. Not that you shouldn't, but you know, you have to stop with F Champ. You got Mike Z who gets some in all kind of trouble. You know, you got the Chris G stuff. Um, so there was there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's hard to keep up with everything. Uh, of course, we shouldn't ignore any you know every, any anybody, but you know, it was literally like a hundred stories within three days. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. So it it's, escalated uh, quite. <laughs> Yeah. I think but, if, we, if we if we have to say a final word on this cancel culture thing, and what would be your final message? I think if I may start first, I I, th I agree with Crimson. It's important, you know, to keep a balance. I don't want I don't want anybody getting abused, you know, for any reason whatsoever. It's wrong, and it's immoral. 
but I also don't want. Well, wait before before you get into that. What do you guys think that they should do at tournaments to help reduce all this? So one one thing that um, they're doing right now, because um, we we kind of had a little thread about this. Like Kim, Kim was basically posting and saying, "Hey, you know, what can we do to make sure that people are safe, like at our events, right? Regardless of the rest of the FCC, just like in our stuff, how can we make sure that you know people who are abusers and harassers and stuff like that aren't around?" Uh, and so uh, he quoted like me banning DMS or whatever, and uh, I replied to him just basically said, hey, you know, like, for sure, like, what I did was based on those text messages. Uh, and I wanted to hit up some TOs and ask them, you know, like, how do, what is the standard for proof for banning someone from that, right? It can't just be, okay, we think this person's better, we think they did this, like, but what is the line that you would have to cross to get banned? And so Vandy replied to that, and he said something that I've kind of seen tweets about here and there from like Rick and Jabali and stuff like that. But basically he said that that's one of the things that they're working on right now between all the TOs is deciding how do we say where the line is where we no longer allow someone at an event and what is allowed to count for proof. And it's a tricky discussion. It sounds like it's going to be a long one. Uh, But yeah, just to bring that element in, apparently now a lot of different TOs are having conversations behind the scene to figure out what is actually okay to count for proof and how much proof do you need to ban somebody from a tournament. I hope that there's at least some type of uh, like a council or something where there's like, and there's like a a diverse group because, you know, we don't want to have that situation where it's like, well, all the TOs, for the most part, in my not to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, all the TOs are male, and they, you know, they're following like one certain demographic. We don't want that. Um, especially like a lot of these abusers are like male to female. Not saying that it has, you know, obviously sin pie with a female male to male, but like we need at least some type of um woman or female um representation in that because like. The whole thing with infinity like <clears throat> if we're not to my knowledge dms hasn't been banned from tournaments and then if you read that tweet longer and you feel like that's kind of like whoa like that's the person that you know was we were cool with this entire time and we figured out what he's done he was like essentially grooming like infinity and that's kind of like that's kind of crazy so do we want someone like that around and where's that line drawn you feel me? So it's well, tough. I just hope. Yeah. yeah, but what what's the method they could do though to help prevent this stuff happening in the future though? But That's why do we tough. need a why do we need a council? If you think you you were abused, then please go to your local authorities and report or talk to somebody you can trust, and make sure that your voice is heard. I think I don't that. trust. Why would we trust anybody in FGC? These people are not legal experts. They're not authorities. I wouldn't trust anybody in the FGC. Trust your local authorities. Well, Talk to people that you're very cool. Yeah, but what if something happened you and no one believes it? That's that's the issue, that's the issue right now, especially you know with everything that's happened in like the last three months, maybe four. Especially like just coming forward, a lot of people have come forward on Twitter, not outside the FGC, talking about, yeah, I definitely reported my stalker to the to the authorities many many times, and the authorities never did anything, and then he came and abused me. So well, that type of like that type of stuff I, I happens. Would say if this stuff is as widespread as people claim, then the FGC is not worth it. Why would I be in the FGC if I'm going to associate myself with a with a bunch of molesters, racists, etc.? Why would I be in this community then? I'm never going to travel off offline ever. Again. Well, that's kind of why the FGC is becoming more of an online community. Well, oh, well maybe everything is. Yeah, everything. So maybe that's that's right now, yeah. 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 So, but, I, I mean, to be fair, ahead. it's it's not. Even if there is a lot of it in the FGC, I don't think it's the FGC itself. I think this is just, you know, this is the world we live in. This stuff happens. Like, I wasn't even aware of how often this stuff was was going on until I started talking to more people who were victims. And then I realized how common it is that this stuff happens and people either report it and doesn't get taken seriously or they're, you know, let's be honest. Some Some people are scared to report things because they know that if they do, Right, either the defense or friends of the accused or whatever are going to go through all their stuff 
All right, start digging up dirt on them, start digging up their romantic past, start posting stuff about, you know, they slept with this person or that person, and a lot of things that people might not feel comfortable putting out in public. You know? So I just, I just say this to say that, you know, yeah, our responsibility is the FGC side of it, but I don't think it's that the FGC itself is terrible or whatever. You know, I think we have some growing to do, but this is going on really everywhere. And we're just kind of aware of our end of it now because this is where people are talking about. Yeah, and and the nature of information is also like one of those like factors. At any given moment, you're only able to like interpret how much points of data, like any kind of information, as a human being. And you're not a NSA, right? So, <laughs> like, when I say that, it's like you're not afraid to just step outside your house because people die every day that step outside their house. You're like 70% more safe inside your house, even though you can die inside your house too. That's like the same reasoning as like when people go to FGC events. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of (laughs) all these type of people at this event that even stuff we don't know, we only might know 10% of all the abuses. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of stuff that we don't know about that happened. And so it's like that, that's like the world we would live in, like just what criminals out said. And I think, and in your position, especially um, Dave, and uh, in our position, we are straight, cis, white. Well, I'm mixed, but you guys, white and, and crimson's black males. We are like, in quotes to like the, the animal kingdom, apex predators. Like women, on the other hand, are like a notch right below us in terms of like the societal and like animal kingdom spectrum in terms of like being how would you say it um in terms of like privilege no yeah exactly Mm -hmm. privilege i was gonna say like some type of like abuse abuser but yeah exactly so in terms of that privilege we're not gonna be we're not gonna have the full spectrum you feel me like as uh, far as no I, i understand the point that you're trying to make as far as um you know like you again for me at least I don't want any five men of any color deciding, you know, a, a, some kind of counsel about the allegations about, you know, that a woman is making. That nobody in the FGC aside from Ultra David that I know of is a legal expert. So why are we gonna go that route? I don't. These people, I don't even know what their education level are. Who would those people be? That's why I think that's an absurd idea. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. And as far as you know, the system is unfortunately imperfect because humans are imperfect. There will be some stuff that gets missed, and it pains me to say this, but that's just the way it is, and it sucks. But we're trying to keep those numbers as small as we possibly and humanly can so that people who are abused at these tournaments get their voice assert, uh, and, then, and that the perpetrators get the proper, you know, get the proper punishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it's not going to be easy, but I think it's good that we're doing it. Exactly, and the same thing, like we said, we're not trying to have any, you know, also any false accusations. I don't want Crimson's, you know, reputation tarnished because tomorrow's, you know, somebody's said something that's not true. I, I, you know, it's it would be completely unfair. That's why these again, and the only people who can do this stuff is people. Well, okay, what if someone did that? Let's say someone said someone uh, did something, but they didn't. Shouldn't something happen to the person that? made that false claim yeah how come they get to get away with uh no issue yeah i think you, shouldn't we do something about that too i think you should treat those people with, with equal justice right if someone... yeah so let's say you made something up to get somebody else fired and then it turns out the, uh, the person that got fired didn't actually do that shouldn't the person that made this claim also get fired i mean i would argue that how do we know for certain that the accuser that's saying something was actually false to begin but with. that's the problem then that's no, no, no. My, my point is, if there's a way to prove it, like let's say, I don't yeah, know, I guess it hasn't it's, happened if it's yet. Undeniable, I, mean, sure. I guess no, I'm saying, I guess it hasn't happened yet in in the in the FGC. But let's say someone makes up a claim, and it was completely false and debunked. You have to know it was false, and what it's confirmed that it was. Shouldn't some kind of penal, uh, penalty happen to the person who did well, this? Shouldn't they get banned from all tournaments or lose their job or if something? It's confirmed that it's false, but sometimes, like, then we would. Yeah, I'm not saying, oh, who do you believe? I'm saying, let's say it's confirmed that the person made this shit up just to, you know, try to. But then, where do you draw that drama. line? To some people, the fact that there's no proof and maybe the person is popular enough is enough that, oh, they made this up because they can't prove it. And some people are going to get lost in that and kind of. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, let's say there was proof that this person did that. Like, I don't know, let's say a video came up that they weren't at this place, what they said, or whatever. I'm just saying, 
What if the situation happened? Would it, shouldn't a person get penalized that did this? Sure, but I mean, think about how many times you're able to like disprove an allegation and and have proof that the allegation wasn't good. like if someone just outright just says hey like there was like this tournament rio was just saying some crazy stuff and right and like in 2015 for example oh well how is it like if it's completely made up there is no proof neither for nor against you're never going to be able to just like low key just be like yeah you know oh, by the way, I have this proof that I didn't say that because the person could have literally have been in the same room with you. True, but that's a circumstance I'm not really talking about. That's like a very specific situation. I'm saying, let's say someone says something about someone in 2019 and it didn't happen and there was proof that it didn't happen. Now, what happens to the person who made that shit well, up that, that the other person fired? That actually happened this week, I think. Um, there was, there was an accus a pretty big accusation made against Noel Brown. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad to read that. Yeah, by someone who was either maybe not dating him, but they were hanging out and they were romantically involved. And she made this accusation. And then um, he came out and said, hey, look, I have a lot of information to show that this is not true. And he posted text messages of her basically apologizing to, I guess, a friend or something like that for lying about him, you know. So it's like, this is not even a hypothetical, right? There are situations even this week where it's like something went out. Mm -hmm. You know, a bunch of people expressed their sympathy or whatever, and then there was information that came out to the contrary. You know? But I think for sure, if there is proof, like hard proof, you know, where, which usually happens because someone gets confronted and then they apologize and say, yeah, you know, it's like they're hit with so much information that they can't deny it anymore. And then they say, yeah, I was wrong. And if that happens, yeah, absolutely. I think to be fair, you have to do something so that those people aren't doing that again, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. I agree. That's why you have to be very careful where you're casting your stones. You need to be hundred percent sure. Yep. That this has happened or there's proof before you start saying or retweeting shit. Yep. Because you could do a lot of damage, and you should be held accountable for what you retweeted or said. You can't just get away scot free. Like that's stupid. Well, another question is also that, if I may, inject one last topic here is that should these people be banned forever? Tom made an argument earlier, like. It depends on what they did. Well, I think. We pardon you raped somebody. You need to be no, banned. No, I, I understand that. But Tom <laughs> made a point. <laughs> <earlier. laughs> Tom made a point earlier about we pardon criminals. You know, if they get rehabilitated, you know, you know, and they change their ways. Does does somebody like F Champ deserve to be banned forever? Does somebody like Mike Z? I think he's banned from combo breaker so far if i'm not mistaken who is, who is we i mean there should be a penalty but i don't think it should be in the same extreme as if like i said if somebody murdered somebody or raped somebody or well i can it's something that extreme there's a couple of things for one i think it depends just like in the real world if you are accused of let's say uh whatever you want to call it carnal knowledge statutory rape whatever you want to call it well anything involving a minor there are laws you have to follow. Like you can't work at certain places, you can't do certain things, you can't be outside on certain days, you have to be indoors on certain days by a certain time. So obviously, if you're like in the FGC to allow someone like that to an event, because there are going to be children of all ages and their parents have to feel safe, not just the children, but the parents have to feel safe that, hey, my 16-year-old kid is going to be around so-and-so. Um, so I feel like people like that shouldn't be allowed back just because, just for, these people have to feel safe, right? But there are other people who have done something not along those lines where you could say they're not really a threat to society, I guess, you know, a threat, whatever, that they've done something, every, a life sentence should, is too broad. Like if you abuse somebody, you rape somebody, it's a life sentence. You said something that offended a bunch of people that was bad for their time. That's a life sentence too. That's a huge scope. You know, that's like all of it's a lifetime ban. I mean, so I feel like that's what cancel culture, I think, is taking a paintbrush and saying, you said this word, you're banned for life. You abuse this person, that person, you're banned for life. That's a pretty big disparity, right? In whatever. I feel like at some point there are some things that, yeah, are wrong and those people should be punished and people need to feel safe. 
But at the same time, not everything can be for life. Life is something that is uh, one for safety, right? People don't feel safe and you you can't guarantee other people's safety with this person or that person around. You know, also you don't want the victim of whatever to be able to constantly look at their abuser every single time there's an event. So that's why you would do like a lifetime ban in that so that this person doesn't have to relive that trauma every single time. Um, and if that person doesn't go back to an event and the abuser does, who's really being punished here, right? So for some things, for sure, you have to do that. But for other things, like, you know, for FCHAMP, for life, I don't know about for life. I mean, people do things in jail and they get released and they can go back, you know, whatever. Well, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, it depends on the person in the case. Like, if you say one racist thing for the first time, okay, you probably won't get life banned. But if you keep doing it for years, then you probably should eventually get life banned. Because let's I mean, not forget here, let's not forget that infiltration he was in a ban for apparently domestic abuse. And I say apparently because I don't know what the court said. I'm not familiar with the, with the outcome. And I don't know what happened with that. And, he, and he's, I think he's allowed back in. He's been, I'm, I'm banned. I mean, I don't condone what FCHAP said, but there's a difference between saying stupid stuff and actually hitting somebody. Or you know, hurting hitting them. Or hurting yeah, them. like, you know, so... And I think cancel culture kind of grouped those two together. So if you say something racist, you're as, you as bad as the guy who's hitting his wife. I'm sorry, but that's not the case. One is clearly a lot worse than the other. Or even, you know, groping women. There's a difference between saying something to women that's not, not appropriate and literally going to turn them and gr start groping people. Like, that's night and day difference. Again, yeah. Crimson, am I right or wrong here? Like, I don't know. You because tell me. There's nothing wrong, in my opinion, before Crimson goes. There's nothing wrong with someone like Champ saying, you know what? I... I said something I shouldn't have. I realized I was wrong. I'm really sorry. And even if he takes the ban, comes back and it's a big, okay, that's clearly a mistake. He said something, whatever. Does anybody really think that he's going to start going out of there and committing hate crimes at these tournaments? And there's no evidence to the contrary to say he will. So for life, in that instance, we should say, hey, you know what? Made a mistake. He's, you know, he realizes he's sorry. As long as he doesn't repeat it and everything's fine, it's like, okay, he made a mistake. Some people, you can't tell people they should move on. Some will, some will never. You can't tell people how to feel. I understand that. But as far as like a lifetime, a life sentence, I don't feel like that should happen for that. Yeah. I mean, even though even though it kind of indirectly affects me, I don't think that chance should be better for life. I do think he should have been better. And I think it's important and I'll tell you why. Part of the reason why is I think throughout the FGC, we just need to make sure that there's like standards for this stuff, right? Meaning that it can't be like, if you're not gonna ban someone permanently, like, well, all right, we don't really have anything that says how long we ban someone for, right? So maybe we ban them and then maybe they're friends with the TOs or they're a big name and we kind of want to see them come back and they just kind of slide in. Whereas someone else who might not be as popular gets banned, you know, and it takes them 20 years to get back into the FGC or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just think it's important that whatever you do, and I think this is part of what the TOs are doing right now. There's like a standard that says, okay, if this happens, this is how long we ban people for, right? Then there's no question, there's no favoritism or anything like that, you know? And then, yes, yeah, the question of like, how long do you ban people for, right? I mean, it's kind of funny to think, can you imagine <laughs> if F Champ got banned for like 20 years? And then, <laughs> He's coming back to the FGC. He's like 50 years old. He's coming in to play Marvel 8, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, I think, yeah, it's an interesting question. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think he should be banned for life. I do agree with Dave. And I also think it's an important point that what else you do during this period of time matters, right? So if someone gets banned for racism and then they're still out here dropping the N-word and saying questionable stuff, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that that's would be very Peter Fenders. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Versus, if it really seems like they're they're sorry and they apologize for it, and you know their stuff is clean, then yeah, at some point, I think you gotta let them let them back and give them a second chance. Yeah. Well, let's get everybody's final word on this topic. I think we've covered more or less, you know, a little bit touched upon a little bit of everything. Final word. Let's start with Rio. 
Uh, regarding everything, I mean, I agree with cancel culture. It's a good thing to have people penalized for what they're doing wrong. They should be held accountable. But I also think uh, the people that are falsely accusing people and trying to ride the wave to get other people they don't like in trouble for no reason should also be penalized. That's how I feel about it. All right. Um, slips. I just think it's a case by case basis. You have to take each case, weigh the evidence, and make your decision based on the evidence at hand. All right, Cyfox. I agree with Rio, honestly. Um, everything that the cancel culture has been recently, we've always been doing it. Um, I think public shaming is a good deterrent for, you know, uh, guiding the overall way the community interacts with each other. And we had to set a standard, just like Crimson Shadow said, like what is accept acceptable, what is not moving forward, and making sure that all parties are considered. Um, let's go with um, Tom. Uh, I think it should be a case-by-case -case basis. And I think during that time, whether it be a ban or extreme public shaming, whatever is happening, that person should be able to show that, hey, they are really sorry, not just with words, but with actions. And if they demonstrate that, and it is something that you could say, hey, nobody, nobody got hurt, it's not something where they're, you know, people are in danger or someone's being abused or anything like that. They should be able to show, hey, you know, I'm truly sorry and, you know, move forward as, and show that they are better for it. But there are also extreme cases, which I believe cancel culture is, is there for. It's like, you know, we're not just canceling you just to get you whatever. We're, we're actually canceling you because we feel people are not safe around you or these people don't feel safe around you. And I think that's a legitimate reason. Um, and it's just a case by case basis. I don't think any, everything should, any, anything should be blanketed under a broad scope. I think it's case by case. And right, I'm gonna give the final word to our special guest, Crimson, go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's great that we're having this conversation, you know? I think it's awesome that we're talking about this. And I think it's super important that we continue to have these conversations about whatever makes people feel uncomfortable, you know, whether it's this or, or something else. Uh, I think it's super important that people continue to talk openly and also that we're always listening to each other, all right? And so I think if, if we can continue to discuss these things and continue to work through them in a way that makes everyone, regardless of what side they are, are on feel like they're being heard and if we can continue to make the FGC feel like a safer place for people regardless of their race their sexuality their gender or anything else um then i think that's the best thing that can possibly come out of all of this so you know i have really positive feelings about it and i'm really glad that these things are being said and discussed all right that's on that note I'm your co-host M today. I want to thank my co-host Rio, Slips, Tom Brady, Zyfox. And I want to give a special thanks for Crimson for joining us on such a short notice. We appreciate you guys listening. Please comment on the YouTube. And I'm going to uh, post this somewhere on Test Your Mind as well. Again, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of the podcast. Bye, everybody.